the world, can be a fickle place, full of unexpected twists and turns. One minute everything can seem to be going smoothly, and the next, a bombshell drops that shatters everything you thought you knew. That's exactly what happened to one man, who came home early to share news of his diagnosis with his wife, only to walk in on his wife's secret affair. This is the legendary story, of Reddit user, Swansong. Before we start, change the like button's ringtone to a symphony of screaming ladies. Warning, this cheating revenge story, might be upsetting to cheaters. I feel compelled to come here, because I can't fully disclose my situation to those close to me. On the 1st of December, I received the news I had been dreading. All of the tests have confirmed what I feared the most. I have been diagnosed with stage 4 pancreatic cancer, which means this will be my last holiday season. Despite the devastating news, I have come to terms with my fate and made peace with it. I am content with the life I have lived, and I know that my loved ones will be taken care of after I am gone. As a naturally private person, I have kept my medical tests and diagnosis to myself. My significant other, Jane, is still unaware. I didn't want to worry her until I had concrete answers. I decided to head home early, to have a serious talk with my loved ones about my diagnosis. It wasn't something I wanted to do over the phone or through text messages. Little did I know that my life would change in more ways than one that afternoon. As I pulled up to the house, I noticed the flashy and expensive car of one of my business partners in the driveway, complete with a personalized license plate. To say this is out of the ordinary, is an understatement. As I parked my car in the driveway, I immediately checked our home camera system on my phone. However, I noticed that it was in privacy mode and not recording anything. I didn't think much of it and decided to leave for my farm property. Although our camera system was primarily for safety purposes, I occasionally used it to watch wildlife or storms passing through. For my personal enjoyment, I set up a second video recorder years ago to archive the footage on local storage. Unfortunately, I couldn't access this storage from my phone. As I arrived at my farm property, I immediately opened my computer to check the other server and confirm my gut feeling. And there they were, my business partner and my significant other, snuggled up in the living room, drinking wine, dancing, and eventually going up, to the bedroom suite. I couldn't believe what I was seeing, and it only got worse when I realized that they had left the doors open. The microphone had recorded their activities even after they left the camera view. With my limited time left, I knew I needed answers, but I didn't want to deal with the drama of a confrontation and a divorce. You can call me whatever you want. After seeing my significant other and business partner's affair on camera, all of my love and devotion for her vanished in an instant. I went through all the expected emotions, but I knew that I wasn't to blame. I knew what's important to me. I had been a loyal, romantic, and attentive partner, and now it was time to think about myself. I sat down with my lawyer and went through my will and prenup. I shared with him what was going on and we worked on understanding the extent and duration of the affair. It was a disturbing discovery, and it made me wonder if I ever really knew the woman, I had spent over two decades of my life with, or if something in her had changed. For now, I've decided to keep quiet about what I discovered to both my wife and our non-existent children. Instead, I'm going to put on a brave face and make it through the holidays. I want to create one last precious memory with the kids and grandkids. During the holidays, I'll act as a doting father and grandfather, and try to play the role of the doting husband as well. I know some of you might be wondering about some background information, so here it is, Charles is my business partner, but not my friend. I never invest with friends. I am a widower and have not remarried. I never married the mother of my twin children. It was her choice, and I completely agree with her that at that time, she made the correct decision. When my children were seven, their mother Sarah married a wonderful man named Steve. Sarah and Steve never had children of their own. It wasn't until my kids were three that I realized I needed to step up and be the father they deserved. I had always been involved in their lives, but I knew I needed to do more. Since then, I have been dedicated to being the best father I can be. Sarah and I co-parented well together, and I would call Steve a friend. Sarah, Steve, and I are in our 60s, Jane is almost 60. Charles is in his 50s. Jane and I, are both in our first marriage. We were in our 30s when we married. What do I need? An outside outlet and release valve. If I'm going to accomplish my goal, I need to vent my anger and talk through my situation. What better outlet than internet strangers? I am at peace with how and when my life will conclude. I would confide in Sarah and Steve, so they can kinda prepare for the aftermath, 
and take care of any loose ends you may have missed. Sorry to hear all this, OP. I truly hope that you leave everything to your kids and grandkids. Please don't leave anything to Jane. I'm sorry about this. I hope after the holidays you can spend the rest of your life with those who truly love you. I don't know what to say OP. I'm so very sorry. Cut Jane out of your will completely, except for a note saying, maybe your affair partner will leave you something, when he passes. I like that line. There is much more I know about Charles, that she does not. When I need to rant again I will expand on that. Right now, I need to go wrap presents. Thanks everyone. Reading your comments did help. Sorry you are dealing with this. If I can make a suggestion for you to handle your cheating wife, I'd suggest the following. First, don't let on that you know. Second, change your will. Leave everything to your kids. Also, leave a package for your wife to be given to her at the will reading. Include a copy of the video footage and a note expressing how much she hurt you and explaining why she will not be receiving anything. Then make sure the lawyer gets everyone together for the will reading and make sure everyone knows why you changed the will how you did. Maybe by doing this you will get some happiness. Knowing she's going to be destroyed when everything comes out. Again, sorry this is happening, but you have the opportunity to hurt her the way she hurt you. I am in a unique position. I made my wealth before I met Jane. Early on I placed my major assets into a trust. So the trust owns my home and the farm. I really retired in my early 30s and went to work for a nonprofit. No one knows, but I only kept about $10,000 of my salary from that nonprofit. I donated the rest back. Essentially, my personal assets are very limited, except for my control of the trust. Jane insisted on the prenup, because she was well established in her government job and pension. She was making good six-figure income and has a six-figure pension. We both really kept our finances apart. She knows I am comfortable, but doesn't know how big the trust is. She was set to inherit a 49% control of the trust. That is no longer the case. She might have a life insurance policy on me, but it is payable to the trust. My main concern is how to structure the trust at this time. The twins will have over 90%, but I need to consider who has the tiebreaker. I will need to set up a power of attorney and inform someone of this. However, for now, I just need to focus on getting through the next few weeks. I am uncertain about what instructions I will give regarding my funeral and reading of the will. First of all, I want to express my gratitude for all of your support. Your comments have given me a lot to think about, and I appreciate it. To provide more context, Sarah and I were very young when we had the twins. Even though they were a surprise, we always wanted them. Now, the twins are in their 40s, and we have several grandchildren who are teenagers or older. Every year, we have a week-long Christmas celebration on the farm. We all gather together, cut down a tree, decorate the house, cook meals, play games, and enjoy each other's company as a family. Sarah and Steve have been a part of this tradition since I bought the farm. However, I have made the decision to not tell anyone about my fate, until after the new year. I don't want to burden Steve with keeping a secret from his wife, and I want the kids and grandkids to enjoy the week without any sadness or mourning. In a few weeks, there will be plenty of time for my family to grieve and prepare for my passing. Jane's presence this week, will be a small detail in the grand scheme of things. To be honest, Jane doesn't mean as much to me as the rest of my family. However, the financial aspect of our marriage is quite interesting. When Jane and I met and got married, we were both well established in our careers and wealth. She had a great job with a solid pension, and had received two inheritances that were put into a trust. We agreed early on that we were both comfortable with not disclosing our entire net worth to each other, at Jane's insistence. Additionally, we have a prenuptial agreement that stipulates any property or trust that predates the marriage, and any income derived from those resources are not considered marital property, again at Jane's insistence. I now provide housing with utilities for Jane and cover all her expenses, including travel, food, and fuel. Essentially, I support her financially 100%, as she spends her income and wealth on herself. She has bought a car, clothes, and personal travel, as well as cosmetic surgery to maintain her outward beauty. However, her true character has shown her to be ugly on the inside. A few days after my diagnosis, I decided to retire from the nonprofit organization. Jane seemed a bit uncomfortable with this news, and I can guess why. With me being around more often, it may disrupt her lifestyle. Tomorrow will be my last day of work, 
and I'll be focusing on spending more time with my family. I've given my lawyer access to the camera server information from his office, and I don't know if Jane and her friends have engaged in any further activities. At this point, I don't really care. I know who I am and what is my worth, and Charles is a big step down. While he may be flashy, I prefer a low-key lifestyle. I drive a 15-year-old pickup truck, and my wardrobe consists of jeans, t-shirts, and coveralls in the winter. I know for a fact that Charles does not have anywhere near the wealth that Jane thinks he does. How? Since the trust has invested in his business, I get quarterly financials. I don't tell anyone how much I have, that is between my accountants and me. The trust has been growing for over 30 years, and it will provide enough resources for my great-great-grandchildren to enjoy the farm, and have their education expenses covered. Jane's realization of what she has lost, will be her own reckoning, but I won't be around to witness it. December was really busy. We did our normal social rounds these past few weekends. Charles was at one of the parties, and it was hard not to keep an eye on him and Jane. I don't think I was caught. With everything being so busy, and wrapping up work, I've had an easier time keeping it together. Jane hasn't expressed anything, that would lead me to conclude that she knows that I know. I'm not proud of it, but I still sleep in the same bed. I've been selfish with her lately, and I feel like I'm using her. But apparently, she's been using, me for at least the better part of this year. I'm not as honorable as many of you have made me out to be. I hate this small amount of deceit. Don't worry about Jane getting everything, as she won't. Rest assured that the trust is in good hands, as I have provided detailed instructions on how it should be managed. Thanks to your comments, I have made plans in case my health deteriorates earlier than expected, or if I pass away unexpectedly. I have also made arrangements for in-home care when needed, and it's important to note that Jane will not be my caregiver. In the event that I become incapacitated, my lawyer will inform Sarah, Steve, and the children, and Jane will be prevented and blocked from contacting me. I have also secured all my important documents, valuables, and other items in a safe location. Additionally, I have started writing letters to each family member, including Jane, which has been way harder to do than I thought. I wanted to update you all before the holiday festivities begin. Although I may check in during the week, if I don't, please be assured that it was planned and expected. Thank you all for your support. You are such an incredibly strong person. I truly admire you. Thank you for the update and clarification. I am glad your twins are older. There is no doubt they will be devastated by your prognosis, but they are old enough to handle it. I wish you nothing but peace in your coming days, and I hope you will be able to build more lasting memories for your grandchildren. One suggestion, take a lot of videos over the holidays. In the years to come, when your children and grandchildren break out the photos of family get-togethers, having video to watch does more than put a picture to the name. Generations to come will be able to see your smile, laugh and hear your voice. Thank you again for the update and clarification. Mission accomplished. I'm happy to report that our holiday week was a success, free from drama. I'm pleased to have made it to 2023 and would like to apologize in advance, if my humor about my condition offends anyone. It helps me cope, and I hope you can understand. Since everyone has left, I have a few updates to share, but I prefer to keep the details of my week with my family private. That is for me to cherish. Regarding Jane, I observed some concerning behavior that I feel compelled to share. I believe this may have been the first time she cheated. It seems that being around us all week has taken a toll on her. Her secretive behavior with her phone and frequent breaks away from the family gathering, were suspicious. The most telling incident was when she claimed to need to go to town, and one of the grandkids wanted to join her. The gymnastics she did, to not take the grandkid. I have to admit that I kinda played with it by asking why not? So the affair is continuing. With me now retired and she is asking me about my plans for the day or week. So I go ahead and tell her, and then ask her what her plans are. Later this week, I will suggest we meet up for lunch due to me being in the same area as her. Just to mess with her. I guess it's true someone said on another post, unpredictability is the cheater's worst enemy. This morning, I met with my lawyer to finalize some important decisions. I requested him to draw up necessary documents, including my new permanent will, to replace the temporary one. The papers have been signed, and I am relieved that I won't have to make any changes again. In preparation for all hell breaking loose, I had him draw up divorce papers based on the prenup and the evidence of the affair. 
she gets nothing but 25% of our shared assets. Think housewares and furniture. I keep all of my liquid assets, retirement funds, and items I purchased with my own wealth. Also if I push it, she is required to pay alimony. I have, signed them and have a packet created with all of our evidence of the affair. I am holding this in case I want to use it. I sold my loan to the trust. I will allow the trustees to convert it to shares in Charles's company. Speaking of the trust, I have decided how I want it managed. I will drop myself to a 1% trustee. The twins will get the majority of the trusteeship. The four grandkids will make up the rest. All of the grandkids' proxies will be Sarah and Steve. As each turns 24, the kids' trusteeship will move from Sarah and Steve to the grandkid. If a fraction is left over, Sarah gets the extra share or vote. I have planned a meeting with the kids, Sarah and Steve for next week. I plan on telling them everything then. They have to sign documents and they will want to know why I am doing this. So when this is done, my personal value will be my liquid assets, personal property, and the money from the loan. So in the worst case scenario, Jane will get very little compared to the assets and value in the trust. In the next couple of weeks, I will disperse the few personal items I want to go to the kids and grandkids. Those are already at a safe location where my lawyer has access. Some of you commented on my health. Well, if I was not clear, I am not fighting this. I am letting nature take its course. So I have no ill side effects from any treatments. I did notice this week I was more easily tired out. The family noticed also. I played it off as the old man getting older. I still have the cough. The cough is what started it all. It was my tumors in the lung that led to all of the diagnoses. I just played it off as a lingering cough, from the virus that went over the world. I expect to go downhill pretty fast once other issues pop up. But by that time everyone will know. And thank you for all of your well wishes on that aspect. I am planning to spend time with the family. A large trip with all of their different obligations would be tough. That, reason is why this week was so important to me. It was the last time I could be with all of them for an extended amount of time. I am thinking of a small trip for myself. We will see. My next goal is to spend a day one-on-one -on -one with each of my children and grandchildren. The letters are not done. Those are very difficult. I will let you all know how the meeting next week goes. Best to you all. We are all here for you. I wish you the best few months of great joy. It means a lot, thank you. I know karma will prevail, because you're doing your part to ensure it does. But I really want your health to win this battle. Don't think I've rooted this hard for someone to live. So happy you made it to the new year, enjoy your family sir. You're such a lovely man, there are really shitty people who get to live a long and useless life, yet people such as yourself are robbed. I am sending you the biggest and tightest hug that lasts a long time. Not a fleeting insincere one. Thank you, but don't worry about me. I have had a life well lived. If this is my time, so be it. I will go down this road with the same determination and tenacity I have all other roads. Just hug and love your loved ones. When my sister passed from pancreatic cancer, she refused pain medication because she didn't want to be drugged and out of it. That will always stay with me, seeing her in pain and still hanging out with us. You sir, are facing death with grace and courage, but it's also okay to be afraid, you made peace with it, and are choosing to end on your terms. I can completely understand your sister, but I have to say deep down I am scared. Thanks for your thoughts. Also, if part of your plan is to tell your children about your wife's affair when you meet with them, please give them the info about this account. So when it becomes necessary, they can update everyone here. I will most likely have to. They will wonder why Jane is not there, and why Jane is not going to be a trustee. I am afraid of what my daughter and Sarah will do. What I want them to do, may not be followed. I have very little influence when they get going. Remember the old saying, beware a woman scorned, it is not just about scorned lovers. It applies to other women as well. We will see. I will make my case and see what happens. But I want those papers signed next week. Today, I had my lawyer, a notary, the twins, Sarah, and Steve come to my farm to take care of everything I needed. The process went as well as it could have, considering that my family is understandably hurt and angry. When everyone arrived and they saw my lawyer and the notary, the tension in the room was high. I asked them to just sit and listen to me and after I finish, they are to sign the papers. 
After signing the documents I will answer all questions. They all know about the trust. I explained to them it was time for me to release control of the trust to them. I explained how important the trust was in my life. Why I started it. How it was outside of my marriage to Jane by mutual decision. I also left instructions on how I wanted them to direct and use the trust. During the meeting, we explained that the trust would be divided among the twins and grandchildren, with Sarah and Steve holding equal proxy votes for the grandkids until they reached the age of 25. Their trust in me was evident because they signed the documents, and got them notarized. After that was done, copies were collated and I dismissed my lawyer and the notary. I saw them out and thanked them for coming out on a Sunday. They both were gracious as always. When I returned to the dining room acting as a conference room, they all were quiet. My daughter broke the silence with the first question. Well, it was definitely a multi-part question or a stream of consciousness. As soon as she stopped, I started with my health. I explained the fact of my diagnosis. I listened to them making plans on how we were going to fight this. And this is where I stopped them. I explained the odds. I told them I have already had a second opinion. Then I told them what you all already know. I am not going to seek treatment. I am going to let nature take its course. We spent the next hour to an hour and a half arguing. My daughter left the room a few times. Sarah had to go get her. While they were gone, Steve, my son, and I had a heart to heart. They understand where I'm coming from. They might not agree, but they understand. The consensus is that Sarah and my daughter will come around after all this calmed down, and I knew the next question was coming. When did I find out? And I told them. And now there was another round of anger and sadness. I explained that I wanted one more holiday week, where I was not a dead man walking. That I was selfish. I wanted this diagnosis to be after the holidays. I don't want it to taint their holidays for the rest of their lives. My daughter sensing there was still more, went all police detective. She was not going to leave the room, until all was out. She asked how and why the hell Jane didn't tell her. That is when I dropped the last bomb. I told them exactly the same account of events that I did in my first post. That is the first time I truly saw, the fire of anger in my daughter's eyes. I then told them that Jane doesn't know that I know, to this day. I basically answered the same questions, plots and more about things you all suggested. So I guess you all prepped me well. In the end, I told them I valued them way more than Jane. For me, I just want to spend the rest of my days in peace not worrying about Jane. I had to explain my actions during the holiday week. They also pieced together her steps outside for air and the trip into town where she did not want to bring the grandkid. They were worried that I had gone through all of this alone. I told them that I had some social media friends who helped me through the roughest times. However, I refused to reveal where and how I got their help. I want to keep this space for myself, but they can learn about it later. The emotions were really raw, and we have been talking off and on as a group for a few hours, but I told them I needed to go back and talk about the trust. They understand the importance of the trust in protecting my hard-earned wealth, and their future, which is why Jane was not invited to this meeting. With that said, I then proceeded to share the financial details of the trust. Despite their prior assumptions, that the trust was merely a tax evasion tactic or a way to safeguard assets from my marriage to another woman, they were not expecting me to reveal the actual figures. As I went through the assets and balance sheets, the room fell silent in awe. After presenting the information, I was asked a single question. Why did I work so hard during those years when I already had so much? I explained my personal philosophy on finance, which was not new to them and something they had always taken to heart. I told them that I lived off the trust all of these years. I put them through college with that trust. I made time in my life for them with that trust. And I was able to work for a non-profit, basically for free, because of that trust. And if there is any example I want to outlive in them and their children, is to use this trust to do better for others. And not to just write a check for a charity here and there, but to work for something they believe in. During my time with this nonprofit, I have accomplished much more than simply writing a check, I have trained others and built valuable relationships. I am not happy, that today, everyone's lives at that table changed in so many ways, good and bad because of me. It was not the way I wanted it to happen. But it is done. They know all of it. I have begged and pleaded, that they let me deal with Jane. Not to talk about the trust with anyone. We will run a status quo for now. When I get sicker, then things will change. They all have agreed. We spent the next few hours making a meal, talking, crying, laughing, and breaking into smaller groups. They all have left about an hour ago. But I expect the twins to come back. 
I know they will let their spouses in on what is going on. That is just the way they are. And I love my two in-laws children very much. I knew that last night was my last quiet night. I feel a weight lifted but replaced with another weight of worry. Thank you all for listening. Your thoughts and prayers are so valuable to me. Again, tell your loved ones how you feel and give them a hug. Just a quick update, I was surprised by a visit from one of my wife's friends. Her name is Carol, and she is around the same age as Jane. Last week, she and my wife had a girls' night at Carol's house. If you read my comments, you would know that last week, Jane came home very intoxicated, she used a ride share. Carol is an old friend of my wife. I guess being married for over two decades, Jane has forgotten I introduced her to Carol. Carol's parents were friends of my parents. Well, I guess my unpredictability has contributed to Jane being unstable. Regarding last week's girls' night, something happened that caused Jane to reach a breaking point. She became extremely drunk and ended up confiding in Carol about her affair. Despite Carol's attempts to stop her, Jane continued to ramble on about it, even sharing more details than necessary. This understandably angered Carol. As Carol kept condemning Jane, Jane just kept trying to defend her actions while continuing to lay out an endless stream of details. The next day, Carol reached out to Jane. Jane apparently didn't remember anything from the night before. Carol summarized Jane's confession. Well, Jane completely denied that she is having an affair, that she did not say those things, and that Carol is mistaken. Carol told Jane she is full of crap and has a week to come clean, or she will tell me herself. And since Jane continues to deny that she said anything, I got my visit with Carol. So over coffee, I got the abbreviated accounting of Jane's confession. Carol was expecting me to be devastated. I surprised her when I told her I already knew. I asked her who else was around when Jane did this confession. Carol was the only one else in the house. I asked Carol who else she has told. That offended her. She told me that she would not spread something like that before telling me. I apologized. I explained to her that I had my own timeline for wanting to deal with Jane. And adding others would complicate my plans, so I had to ask. Carol was understanding. I asked her, as a favor to me, not to mention it to anyone and allow Jane to think she believes her. Carol agreed with my first request, but said the second part doesn't feel right. I asked her to try and told her I would be okay. Carol said that anything else I need, all I have to do is ask. I know that I will have to make another apology, when Carol finds out about my health. But I will deal with that another day. So I am going to confront Jane tomorrow. We have a regular date night, and I plan on calmly telling her what I know, my condition, and how I'm going to spend the rest of my life without her. I hope the public setting will keep the drama to a minimum. Going as planned or a total disaster, I will update sometime this weekend. My plan is after the confrontation, to give her what I know, asking her to not contact me or my family. We will see how it goes. Once again, you are an inspiration my anonymous friend. I've been following this very closely. I went through my second divorce last year. Both my ex-wives cheated on me, so I know that pain all too well. While I may not have the same terminal diagnosis as you, I do have some understanding of what it's like to witness someone you care about go through it. My best friend died from a terminal illness just before going through a divorce, so I have some limited experience. You're handling this far better than nearly anybody in your situation would, and once again I applaud you. One comment on this post to consider, please give Carol a heads up that you're confronting Jane. It's highly likely that despite what you tell her, she's going to blame Carol. Just help Carol be ready for that next conversation with Jane. I made all of the mistakes and learned from them. I just learned to look at myself from the view of others and that taught me so much of who I was at the time, and who I wanted to be. I've already learned a lot from you. If the universe uses me to help you, then maybe the burden I take on, is not as bad as it seems. Mike Tyson once said, everyone has a plan, until they get punched in the mouth. It's true that every plan doesn't go exactly as envisioned, and mine is no exception. Nonetheless, let me take a moment to describe my plan to you. Jane and I have a weekly date night, and we usually go to the same restaurant where we have a regular table in the back. It's still a public space, but away from the high energy near the bar. I decided that this would be the place where I would confront her. My plan was to do it after we finished dessert. 
I made sure to get my lawyer and his wife's reservations at the same time, and paid for both of our party's meals before we began. Our server had been serving us for years, and I had Carol on call to help Jane after I left. I intended to end the meal with a conversation about our relationship, and I wanted to record it. Then I would confront Jane, tell her about my diagnosis, and explain the plan for what I want. I would also give her a letter, asking her not to contact me or my family or come to the farm, and I would have the letter witnessed. I also planned to leave her a briefcase full of evidence along with the divorce papers and then get up and walk away. I expected her not to create a scene to protect her social status. During the recorded conversation, Jane gushed about how great our relationship had been over the years and talked about how great we were as a team. I asked her if I had ever mistreated her, to which she replied. Of course not. Then I asked her, why she cheated on me. I don't know what Carol told you, but she's wrong. She kept denying, but eventually admitted to it when I revealed that I already knew before Carol told me. At that point, all of Jane's preparation to counter the conversation seemed to vanish, and so did the color from her face. She simply asked. What? I then told her to let me finish without interruption, and she nodded her head in agreement. She went from being a confident and prideful woman to a woman with a deer in the headlights look. I then explained how I came home after my meeting with my doctor, rushing to have the most difficult conversation with the one person I wanted to talk to. I told her that when I drove up, I saw his car. After realizing that the cameras were in privacy mode, I decided to head to the farm. When I informed her that I still had footage, she seemed eager to ask how, but I raised my hand to signal her to let me finish. I told her about my diagnosis and plans not to fight the disease. I could see the heartbreak in her eyes, and it made me angry. How could she feel sorry for me? Despite my frustration, I pushed on. I signaled the waitress, and she went to get my lawyer. They both came to our table. My lawyer handed me a briefcase and a folder containing a letter. I told her that I don't want her to contact me or my family, nor visit to the farm after I left tonight. I signed the letter and asked the server to witness it. The server and lawyer watched as I handed the letter to Jane. After that, I dismissed them and gave the briefcase to Jane, telling her that I knew more than she expected. Feeling completely devastated, I revealed that the briefcase contained divorce papers that I had already signed. I urged her to sign them and begin the divorce proceedings, as I did not anticipate surviving a contested divorce. I informed Jane that she could continue to stay at the home in town as long as I am alive. However, I would be staying at the farm and would not be seeing her after tonight. I made it clear that I did not want to hear any excuses. Additionally, I let her know that I had called Carol to help her getting home. In true fashion, Jane kept her composure in public. She just uttered a quick. But. However, I reminded her that I was leaving and that I was done. Afterward, I went to the server and left her a generous tip. I also sought out the owner and apologized for not giving him a heads up about the situation. As I was leaving, I spotted my son and Carol at the door. Carol passes me with a quick smile, then a concern in her eyes for Jane. My son grabbed my truck, and his wife drove me to the farm. They both stayed with me on Friday night, but I managed to convince them to go home at midnight. Although I felt a great sense of relief for having accomplished what I needed to do, I still felt a deep sense of loss. On Saturday, my family came to the farm to check on me, which made me feel a bit coddled but nonetheless appreciated. However, my good day took a turn when Carol came to visit me in the afternoon. She informed me that Jane had fallen apart on Friday night and had even contacted Charles on Saturday. It seemed that Jane had finally realized she was being used by Charles and was in a bad state. Carol made it clear that Jane had not asked her to reach out to me, but that a conversation with me could give Jane the strength to keep herself out of my life. Although I was reluctant at first, Carol knew how to frame her request persuasively. So, I eventually agreed to have a two-hour discussion with Jane at the farm. We would each have someone there for support, and we would aim to have a civil conversation. I made it clear to Jane that I would not accept being blamed, minimized, or have the blame shifted onto me. The purpose of our meeting was for her to gain clarity on how to move forward. This meeting took place this morning. Jane chose Carol to accompany her, perhaps for damage control, and I chose my daughter. I wanted to make the meeting as comfortable as possible for Jane so that we wouldn't have to go through this again. I came into the meeting with a firm resolution and a clear goal of having Jane out of my life. As expected, Jane, cried, apologized, and tried to minimize the affair, but I refused to accept any of it. I made it clear to Jane that she would have a place to live until my death, but after that, the house decision would be up to the trustees. I also explained that she would not receive anything from my estate or trust. 
However, she has her six-figure pension and trust, so she will be fine. There was one thing that really bothered me. Jane asked me. Why won't you fight for me? Or us? I almost broke loose my temper at her, but I just responded with, I just don't care about you or us, anymore. That kinda destroyed her. Here I'm going to express my anger. This is the mind of a selfish cheater. All they think about is themselves. It's infuriating that even after causing so much pain and destruction, cheaters still expect to be valued enough to fight for. It's not worth the effort to fight for someone who only cares about their own desires and greed. I'm done with that. Frick her. Sorry for the rant. Jane received the answers she asked for, but in hindsight, she did not want them. I do not desire another meeting as it distracts me from my goals. Carol and Jane left, but Carol returned a couple of hours later for a brief conversation with me. It turns out that the trustees notified Charles of their plan to convert the loan into shares of his company. Since the trust will be the majority owner, they requested a full forensic audit. My daughter with an MBA is wasting no time in this regard. When Jane sought comfort from Charles, she realized what I had already suspected, he was using her to see if she could buy the loan from me. There were some offhanded comments in the recordings that indicated his intentions. With the paperwork filed, Charles is now aware that I sold the loan to the trust. Jane is no longer in my life, and her usefulness to him is gone, which he made clear to her. Additionally, Jane spilled her beans and confided in Carol that her trust is exhausted. She will only have the income from her pension. She saw life with Charles to be more glamorous than with me. She truly thinks his net worth is more than mine. He drives nice cars, eats in fancy restaurants. You know he flies first class? All the while my husband played on his farm, drove an old truck, and we flew in economy class. That she was planning on divorcing me when he expressed his undying love and desire to marry her. It disgusts me, that she is this greedy and shallow. I won't see it, but I expect my family will tell her how much I was worth after my passing. I am so glad that her true colors were shown now, so I could deal with her and spare my family from her. Then Carol did something that was totally unexpected, and threw me off guard. She told me that since I am no longer encumbered if I need companionship, to give her a call. I challenged her and asked why with my diagnosis, why would you or any woman want to spend time with me? There is nothing long term. She responded. Just because Jane is an ignorant prude and did not know what she had, does not mean any divorcee or widow would not line up to spend what time you have left with you. You're a hell of a man, any time with you would be cherished by any decent woman. I'm willing to admit that I'm sure quite a few lady callers will be lining up, I might as well be the first in line. I asked her, but most won't know Jane and I are separated? She said Jane does not want the social groups to know, but that she and Sarah will make sure her story is out. I stayed polite and told her I would let her know. She smiled and gave me a kiss on the cheek. I thought about it after she left, but I am pretty sure I do not want that complication in my life right now. I have left quite a bit out, but those are the highlights. I am doing okay. It has been a roller coaster. I need a few days of peace and quiet. The social groups will know soon. Both the breakup of my marriage and also my diagnosis. I will now have an endless stream of people wishing me well. I knew I could not delay it forever, but I don't want to be treated differently. However, life is what it is. Time to start dinner and relax this evening. Again, thank you all for all of your support. I will try to go back and respond to all of your messages. They mean so much to me. I'm so invested that I feel such a relief when you confronted Jane. My blood boiled when she asked why you won't fight for her and the relationship. Psycho, after everything she did. I'm glad that Charles played her and that everyone in the family knows, your daughter is the MVP for doing what she's doing. I also love that she wasted her trust, nice touch. And Carol is a mess, I mean she's not wrong, you sound like one hell of a guy but damn Carol, give the man a day at least. Also, I love that she will let the social group know. I don't know if you will continue to update, I hope you do, but if you don't, I hope that the rest of your days are filled with peace and the love of your family. Thanks for the support. I have to admit, Carol took me by surprise. She said she wanted to be first in line. I guess she believes that fortune favors the bold. I am sure there will be more drama, that I need to vent and gain support for soon. First of all, I am doing okay. 
I am grateful to be alive and healthy. Every day I am able to stay on my feet is a blessing, although my cough seems to have worsened, and I am experiencing some discomfort. I have also noticed that I get winded more easily lately. Overall, it has been a good week. Now, on to Jane. She has gone to the ground and disappeared from the community, and her status has taken a hard and swift fall. Once the news got out, she was politely asked to step down from her leadership roles. Most people in her circle have judged her harshly and even accused her of pursuing their husbands. Although she has tried to reach out to me a few times, I have not responded. A couple was through proxies. I just asked the person to tell her I have said what I needed to say, and I know all I need to know. I really don't care if she needs closure. Why do I need to worry about her selfish need for that? She knows how I feel because I told her. Here are some more details of the affair. They have been going on for at least six months. They took three trips together. One of which they played the newlyweds. They acted as a couple celebrating a 20-year wedding anniversary, and on the last trip, they met on vacation staying at the same hotel. I guess role-playing was a bit of their dynamic. She used my house because she was comfortable there, but also the house is set back from the road and passers-by cannot see the cars in the drive. She also bought herself a second car and stored it in town in a parking garage. She apparently swapped cars when she went to Charles' house, so no one would recognize her car. She was very concerned about how this would be viewed by anyone in her social circle. Maybe so I would not catch her. Her actions alone demonstrate the great effort she put into the affair with Charles. These efforts solidify in my mind how I feel about the situation, and how I have dealt with it. I have no regrets about my actions. The drunken, confession to Carol was only partly due to my unpredictability. Apparently, as soon as the notice of my sale of Charles' loan to the trust was received, he started to distance himself from Jane. I guess from the pressure of almost getting caught and Charles starting to not be as interested in her, she got drunk and let it all out to Carol. You know what happens after that. It is pretty clear to me, that Charles had alternative motives for his participation in the affair. This does not excuse Jane in one small bit. It just makes Jane more pathetic. It appears that Charles wanted Jane's help on his loan with me, and Jane wanted the flasher life with Charles' money. It is interesting how ugly people attract each other. If all of us decent people just allow the despicable to pair up together, we can find better partners. Sorry to all of those out of a sense of devotion you work on reconciliation. It was not for me. Charles is not happy about the intentions of my daughter. It appears he will be trying to stop it in court. All he has to lose is more money. I have heard rumors that he has tried to raise money from other investors to pay off this loan. But unfortunately for him, the news of his actions has already started to circle around my business acquaintances. Remember when I said you invest in persons, not companies? Well, there are not many who want to invest in him. I don't know what my daughter has planned for his company, but it employs quite a few people, so she will work hard to make sure it continues just for them. I think she is worried Charles has something to hide in the company's books. For the employees, I hope it is not anything that cannot be corrected. Family time has been great. I went to a high school basketball game with the family this week. I also scheduled a poker night. That was great. I had some old friends, my son, and my grandson at the game. The grandson got to see how old school men sat around telling tales, and, just enjoyed a night together. I hope to get a few more of these in. We have eaten as a family three times this week. Carol did come over one night and brought dinner. We ate and talked but I kept her at arm's length. I am still not comfortable letting her in. Chores on the farm comfort me. I walk the fences, well, drive at times, check on the animals, check on the employees, and help with equipment maintenance. Knowing that this farm will stay in the family and continue to run, fills me with peace. A part of me lives beyond my time here. I have also had a number of friends and acceptances stopping by. Someone mentioned a living wake, and I think this is what they meant. I am encouraging anyone to come out and see me. I like spending time with these folks, even if it might be the last time. Thank you for suggesting that. Thank you all for your support. It really does help. I am still here. But it has been a bit rough. I am now home but I did spend a few days in the hospital. I was found unconscious but was still breathing, so they took me to the ER. I do have a do not resuscitate order, but I never passed. I have always hated hospitals, but now with my diagnosis, I really hate the hospital. I don't want to die in there. I have been home for a while now. I can no longer drive off the farm. Really, they don't want me to drive on the farm, but
but I am determined to keep doing my chores and seeing the sunrise and sunset as long as I can. I also have full-time home healthcare workers or as I call them, babysitters. But I am not going to fight with the family on that one. So basically I don't remember anything until I woke up in the hospital. Most of my family and Carol were in the room. I was stable by then and the doctors just wanted to observe me for a day or two, and of course run more tests to be sure. I had either my twins, Sarah, or Carol with me for almost the entire time. There was one night when no one was with me, and I woke up with Jane in my room. I guess she pulled the wife card, on a duty nurse that did not know not to let her in. I was tired, but she was playing the sweet and devoted wife. I don't know why. Then when I realized she was holding my hand and stroking my head, I pulled away. She was hurt. She then started the new refrain of being so sorry, she did not mean anything she said to him, she was trying to use him, etc. I just sat there, not engaging. This upset her. She demanded that I talk to her. She was just loud enough to catch the nurse's attention. The nurse noticed Jane's demeanor and my uncomfortableness. The nurse was smooth. She tells Jane to wait outside because she needs to perform some fake checks. Once Jane was out of the room and the door was closed, the nurse asked me if I was okay. I told her that Jane was my ex-wife and there should be notes for her not to be allowed. She apologized and asks me what she wants me to do to limit my stress. I asked her to call my emergency contacts. She did, and in about 45 minutes Sarah, my daughter, and Carol walk into the room. By then Jane is back and still spewing her craziness, but at a very quiet level. Once Jane sees them, she knows that she needs to leave. I quietly ask her to just go. None of the other patients deserve her making a scene. To stop thinking about herself and just leave. I am very thankful that she quietly leaves, but before she does, she gives me a quick peck on the forehead. I recoiled a bit, but if I have to accept that for the peace of the other patients, so be it. The women in my life profusely apologize to me. Honestly, I cannot be mad at them. They have their own lives. They all figured out a schedule to make sure that I was not left alone again. And I am sure my daughter thanked the nurse for calling them, while at the same time letting the staff know her anger for letting Jane in, when they had specific instructions to the contrary. This event just shows me that Jane is like a drowning person. She is just grabbing for anything. I am not special in her eyes. She just sees me as something that she can use to keep afloat. After every contact with Jane, I just see how much darker and black her soul is. Charles is still as much of a jackass as he was before. His accounting department has seen where the wind is blowing and in meetings with my daughter, pretty much gave her an entire picture. There is no criminal conduct by Charles in his business. It is clear that he was using every perk and loophole, to increase his income over his base pay at the expense of the bottom line. So when my daughter takes control, he will realize a 60% reduction of value to him from the company. And that really pisses him off. I have a feeling she might just outright fire him and move him to a silent minority owner role. So his flashy lifestyle is going to hit, a brick wall. He has threatened lawsuits, but has not brought any action yet. I think his credit and or reputation in the area is shot to hell. Carol has been a more permanent fixture in my life. I have to say I don't mind the company and companionship. Maybe she is wearing me down. She has been staying over several days a week. I hope to bounce back sooner than later. But since I cannot drive anymore, I'm going to have to lean on others more. This is uncharted waters for me. Carol has been eagerly volunteering to support me in this area. And before you ask, no there is nothing physical between us other than sitting close together. Thank you all for your continued support. I have been following your story as you've been posting. I just want to wish you continued strength and peace on this unfortunate journey. While my story is not quite the same as yours, I had a massive stroke six years ago. What it did for me was give me clarity on my life, and I was able to find out who was really true to me and cut out a lot of fake baggage. I want to make the most of whatever time I have left until my next stroke, which could happen anytime, whether in a week or ten years. We are not promised anything. I hope that whatever time you have left, you do whatever you can to bring you the most happiness. Take care, and good luck, sir. Thank you for sharing your story with me. You are absolutely right about gaining clarity in life after experiencing a major setback. I wish you all the best as you make the most of every moment. Stay strong, my friend. What a disgusting move by Jane. She just keeps showing how utterly selfish and horrible she is. Sir, I wish you peace and comfort. May your suffering be minimal and may you be supported by the love of your family. 
Best wishes. Thank you, and I could call Jane a cockroach, but that is an insult to all cockroaches. My dad passed away this past week. I have been reading his posts and responses, as I can for the past few days. I hear him so clearly in his posts and responses. One of his requests, was to give you your letter from him. My Reddit family, well if you are reading this letter, you know that my time here is at an end. As all of you had suggested, I had written letters to all of my family members, and also created videos for them as well. While answering your posts, I started referring to you all as my Reddit family. That got me thinking that I needed to write one final letter. That letter is to all of you. I want to thank you all for your support and suggestions. This short time has been so important to me, and will clearly be important to my family long after I am gone. You have helped me achieve my final gift to myself and to my family. That last Christmas week as a family. Without having somewhere to vent, and gain support, I would have had to turn to my family. And doing that would have meant abandoning my goal. My family might not see it as a gift right now, but they will in the future. I cannot tell you how much I enjoyed making those little videos. My family will have another small piece of me, and that is thanks to you all. I would not have done any of those silly little videos without your suggestions and encouragement. Honestly, I would not have even thought of it. I do have one request for all of you. My family will be going through many emotions. I know that part of putting my story out there is for you all to want a conclusion. Please allow my family to grieve and keep the request for updates to an acceptable minimum. I have asked them to give you this letter, and if they feel they could, to give a final update on Jane. That final update is up to them. I have asked them. I just ask you all to be patient. Finally, I wish you all the best. All of the love I can provide from the great beyond. Remember none of us are promised tomorrow. Know yourself, and be good to those around you. I hope none of you suffer the road I have to walk, but if you do, I will in any way I can walk it with you. Remember you all are worth so much. Never let anyone, tell you anything different. I will send as many virtual hugs as I can from wherever I end up. Saying, thank you at times feels so inadequate, but it is the words I have right now. Thank you. I hope we meet in the beyond, just not too soon. It should be us thanking your father. He came here with an absolute nightmare scenario and yet he handled it with a level of poise and charisma that many of us can only aspire to. The fact that his whole family, even Jane, went to bat for him is just a testament to his character. I just want your family to know that the support that we gave him pales in comparison to the hope that he has given us and will continue to give us. He was, is, and will always be one of the best benchmarks on how to handle an affair. What a ride, what a family, what a king. Thank you, my condolences to the family. Here to share the same sentiment. Your father led a noble life and had the grace and dignity to handle his darkest hours in a manner most of us could never achieve. I'm really, really glad he was able to get his affairs in order and to know he left this earth as peacefully as he could. You sound like a remarkable family and I wish you well in your path forward. Your father lives on in his legacy with you, and those of us whose hearts he touched. May your father read in peace. You are a true testament to poise and grace under pressure. Rest in peace, noble traveler. Godspeed. To his family my condolences on your loss. I will remember you as a man of remarkable character. It has been a privilege to walk this digital path with you for this short while. I pray for your family's peace, comfort, and solace. The greater the man, the truer the friend, the more devoted the dad, the more significant his absence is. My sympathy and regards to those who mourn him. In peace, may you leave the shore. In love, may you find the next. I never wanted to read this update, despite it being inevitable. Sir, you proved yourself a far better man than anyone knew. Rest in peace, we'll see you on the other side. And there you have it, an incredible touching story. I hope you were inspired by his resilience and courage, in the face of adversity. If this story struck a chord with you, go ahead and gently caress that like button with the utmost respect. 
Now, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section. What's your take on his journey? What would you have done differently? Your insights and comments start great conversations, so let's get it started. Thank you for tuning in, and don't forget to subscribe for more awe-inspiring stories. Until next time, stay strong and keep your head held high, remember you never know what life has in store.